Hello my amazing tarot friends, it's Justin Michael, welcome back to my channel, and of course welcome if this is your first time visiting, I appreciate you stopping by as always. I got a new Rider Waite Smith deck yesterday, um, which is the first Rider deck I bought in, geez, like a really long time. Um, most of my purchases are like historic decks, you know, I, I purchase a lot of Rider um, Tarot de Marseille, and um, I'm on sort of an Italian kick right now, an Italian deck kick, but the Rider Waite Smith is the deck that, you know, got me into tarot i first fell in love with it and i really love the rider wade smith deck um i think it's the most important deck of the 20th century if not the most important deck of tarot ever because it sort of is what brought tarot into the 20th and 21st century you know it came of age you know it was created in 1909 but it became popular in like 1969 1970 when eating gray published um you know the tarot revealed and all the other books that she published uh you know uh in the late 60s early 70s 1970 i think was um when uh the big book was uh published but this book here that i have is called the tarot revealed this is the basic version and it says a modern guide to reading the tarot and uh this was published in 1960 but it's very basic you know and so that's what kind of made the Rider Waite Smith the deck that everybody clinged on to because there was actually something written about it that people could kind of reference to use for divinatory purposes. And so Eden Gray is to thank for that. And people like Mary Greer, of course, and Rachel Pollock, uh, you know, really popularized this deck. You know, so it wasn't in 1909 and 1910 that this deck became popular. It was more the 60s and 70s um, that it became, uh, you know, what it is today. And like I said, you know, I walked into uh, a bookshop when I was 12 and I got my first deck. I'll show you that in a little bit. But um, and that's how Tower was introduced to me. So I really, the, long story short, I will always love the Rider deck. It's always going to have uh, a special place in my heart. I think the deck is brilliant. It's amazing to read with and um, one of my favorites. So I'm going to show you this deck that came to me yesterday um, from Dark Forest. And I'm really, really happy with it. I got to tell you, the box is a simple tuck box, nothing special. Pro people will probably complain about this. In fact, I know uh, a few of my friends don't like the tuck boxes, but there is an option for a wooden box. For $15 extra, you can get a really nice custom-made wooden box. Um, and uh, yeah, if you don't like that. Personally, I'd rather have the tuck box, even if it's a crappy tuck box, because I just don't have room for all these big boxes uh, in my small apartment. So. Um, this is a plastic deck, so I don't have many plastics. I have a few, um, not too many, but it's a really nice kind of quality plastic cardstock. It's really, really nice. I don't know if it's 100% plastic. It might have some paper in there. I don't know. It kind of feels, it reminds me of my Piatnik Tower to Marseille a little bit, um, the way it feels. But, uh, I imagine these are waterproof and it is advertised as plastic, so these are the backs. They have another kind of cardstock, I'll show you briefly, um, which I'm not crazy about, honestly, but a lot of my friends really like it. So you'll have to decide for yourself um, if you like it or not. I'm not trashing it. It's just not my cup of tea. But uh, this is really, really a beautiful printing of the Rider deck. You know, It reminds me a bit of um, the Dirty Pam or the, um, what is it called? The Radiant Wise Spirit. And uh, I'll grab that deck real quick. So I wanted to kind of compare the two because, so it's the deck that comes in this box, you know, by Los Garabeo. It's called the Radiant Wise Spirit, uh, formerly known as, the, I believe, the Dirty Pam. I don't have a copy of that. But um, I always liked this deck. It's a really cool deck. And I wondered if it was copied, you know, because... Um, it looked very similar, but just looking at it, you know, this is a more of a pan B kind of full, uh, and that's typical of Los Garabeo because uh, most of their decks, um, you know, are pan B. So, you know, it makes sense that they would use a pan B kind of uh, line work for the full. You know, you can see the legs are thicker, the face is rounder, and there's just all sorts of differences, you know. 
but uh, the coloring just sort of was very reminiscent of it. I think that this version is actually uh, a lot better. <laughs> it's different. It's I don't want to say a lot better. I kind of just like it right now a little bit better, probably because it's new to me. Um, and I'll probably have to sit with it over time to see if I'm going to uh, like one or the other better. But I really like the font. I also like, if you look at the card, if you look really close, you can see that it has a laid paper texture to it. Which is very, very cool to me because uh, as somebody who's in the card making, um, you know, that's what... Uh, paper was used for card makers. I have a. I had grabbed one of these just to show you. This is um, handmade uh, cotton paper from India, which I use for making my cards. And you can see the laid texture. This is what would have been used in card shops back in the day. And I just love that texture. You know, I really love uh, laid paper. Uh, I make a lot of my. You know, this is one of my cards. That I print the art is from. Uh, my friend Shell David. This is his Jean Dodal, and this is a deck we print. Um, you can see, you know, it has a laid paper texture to it. But uh, yeah, so this is a homemade tarot card, and it has like that kind of textured paper to it. I really appreciate that. You know, it has it gives it an authentic feel that it has that lead. And even Sullivan Hisman's when he prints his decks. Um, you know, even his homemade cards are printed on laid paper like the historic method. Uh, but they're like $500 a deck. Um, but his, you know, standard cards, you can see they have a laid printing on the back of it. And I quite like that. I think it uh, gives it an authentic feel. So I just want to show you some of these. I'm not going to do a full comparison. But, um, you know, I wanted to show you a couple just to give you an idea. Now, what's funny is, I was looking at the High Priestess, and you know, this is more of a Pam B kind of line work, but the color in her veil is very Pam B. You know, it has that very green, aqua green kind of feel to it. And I really like that. I, this is an instant favorite for me. When I got it, I was blown away. I like the, the feeling of the cards. I like, um, how the artwork looks it's got a really beautiful age quality to it uh, so I'm going to put the the um, radiant wise away and I'm going to show you the rest of this deck I will briefly show you the other deck that I got um, from uh, this company you know but uh, I'm not as crazy about it as I am with this one for whatever reason um, I have some black on my hands because I have a face mask on. <laughs> a charcoal face mask. It's getting everywhere. So, yeah, it's really, really pretty. Again, look at the color of that background on the Hermit. It's amazing. It's really, really nice. It works very well. And I love the font. The font looks um, really good. It doesn't It doesn't bother me, you know. Usually, if it's not, like, the that original calligraphy that was used by the artist Pamela Coleman Smith it sometimes annoys me but this does not it's different it's it's a work of art on its own they did a really nice job and uh, I'm just very happy with it and look at that look at the coloring of the star on that is that not beautiful Hey, and I'll show you some of the pips really quickly. And like I said, this really shuffles really, really nicely. Like I said, it's plastic, so you could probably run a card over with a truck and it would not um, get damaged. I'm not going to show you the entire deck because uh, I showed you, you know, a good amount of them. Because I have a lot of decks to show you. It does come with a little booklet, by the way. Um, Rider Waite Tarot, and it just has, you know, something by Stuart Kaplan here, which is kind of cool. And, um, you know, just basic 
card meanings and so forth. Uh, so now the other deck I got was... There's been a lot of ch chatter about this deck lately. And it's the... Um, the line work seems to be from the Grimaud 1930, which was Paul Marteau's first coloring of... The previous line work was done by Le Quart, which was the publisher. In 1891, Le Quart was sold to um, Grimaud. And so Grimaud pr reprinted the same version, which was the Arnault, which, you know, Conrad Stein has a version of the Arnault, and there are several around. Um, and so uh, what Paul Marteau did was he took that, that there was actually a first coloring of that that was not a, what's called the Besson San, you know, where they swap out the high, the, the Pope S for the um, Juno and Jupiter and so forth. Uh, so he redid it like the original, and he re-included the um, Pope S and the Pope, you know, got rid of Juno and Jupiter, and he recolored it, and he used uh, a, a Convert Cam Juan of the of. It's actually on the um, in the Bibliothèque Nationale. It's a very blue coloring of the um, Convert, and so that's what Paul Marteau used as inspiration. And the color blue in the 1930 is absolutely beautiful. People love that deck, you know. Uh, in fact, the last deck I saw on eBay went for like four or five hundred bucks. It's really a chase in the wild, you know. It's it's a, a unicorn deck for me personally. I have a digital copy of it, in fact, and I've printed the deck for, for friends, uh, so I have have a facsimile, and I'm currently working on my own restoration. I'm about halfway through the majors now um, on this deck, so that's why I was interested in them, was curious to see how they did it, um, and let me just give you an example of why people prefer the 1930 as opposed to the current version of Grimaud. So I don't even have to take a card out of the box. I can just show you the box. So if you look at the color blue used here versus the color blue here, it's a different sort of color. And um, I suspect Grimaud switched because of the technology, the printing technology of the time probably didn't allow them to get this color. You know, it, it, it had something to do with that. They had to stick to primary colors for whatever reason. This is an exact, I don't have an exact copy of um, the 1930 to show you, but it's fairly close, you know, and to me, it's, it's certainly closer than, than the current, um, Grimaud. So I was interested in it and I got it. I'm not a hundred percent happy with it. Um, mostly because it's printed. This version is printed on, um, craft paper, what they call cra craft cardboard. And I just, I don't know it to me. It, first off, it's very light paper you know it has a very light feel which indicates to me that it's very synthetic kind of stuff and it's just if you look at it you know it's it's craft paper is what it is that's what it feels like you know like brown paper bag kind of material and then it's just compressed and coated with something i don't know how they do it it's interesting. It has a, an interesting feel to it, but it's very light. It doesn't have a quality cardstock. It's also very has a very coarse kind of finish to it. I don't know if it's going to grow on me or not. Um, right now, I'm. I don't think I would get any other decks uh, with this uh, kind of paper. I just I'm not like a fan of it, you know. So I just wanted to show you really quickly, since this is a Rider Wade Smith deck. Uh, video. It's probably going to be a bit of a long video, but I just figured I would show you this one pretty quickly. I didn't like that they didn't write Paul Marteau's name on the Two of Pentacles or, or even Grimaud's name, you know, because it is very, very close to the Grimaud deck. You know, I just, for one, I just don't like to see a blank Two of Pentacles because it's not, you know, it's it doesn't fit in with Tyre de Marseille that way. But anyway, I'm not going to show you the entire deck, but, you know, there's some pips. It's the Grimaud deck, but it's just recolored in that 1930 kind of palette. Um, and it's all right, okay? I don't know how I feel about the... It looked a little better to me, you know, on the computer screen. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, I don't know, it's a little much. I, I would probably just rather have a plain white back like this, you know, something like that. So we were talking about Rider-Waite-Smith and, you know, why I really love the deck and... It's 
probably the most important deck of you know the modern era you know uh, but it's very important to me because as a 12 year old I got my first deck and it's how Tyra was introduced to me as I was saying um, and this is the exact version that I got this was this is not the specific deck um, you know it's not the exact deck that I got but it's the exact printing <laughs> I should say because I had to get rid of that other deck when I was a kid for various reasons which I will not get into I've talked about it in you know other videos but uh, this would have been a yellow box but because uh, my box was destroyed I had to retape the front of it onto a um, new tuck box so that's what I had to do unfortunately but this is the early 90s printing of the Rider deck and um, it's really special to me you know if, I don't it's not my workhorse I'll show you my workhorse but um, it's a deck that's special to me because like I said it's the first that I ever came across it has a copyright but it's very tiny at the bottom and it has the calligraphy so the funny thing is when I picked when I got year very years later when I looked at the current deck that's being printed I noticed that it wasn't the same as when I was a kid it looked different and I couldn't figure out what it was and um, later I figured it out it was the font the font changed you know and that's why it, it just didn't have the feel that um, it had and it's something that I definitely noticed you know so that's why I prefer the calligraphy and I think most fans of the Rider Waite Smith do prefer um, you know Pixie's uh, calligraphy but uh, this is just a you know an all-around great you know classic printing it has that old book smell to it you know it's 1991 this was printed so or like 91 or 92 um, might even have been slightly before that. that's 30 something years ago you know so you know it has that old book smell to it but this is a you know very sacred deck to me you know for that reason um, let me show you my workhorse and this was my first Rider Waite Smith that I got um, sort of as an adult um, and it's my absolute workhorse if I could find it <laughs> I just had it um, here it is okay so this is beat the shit as you can see this is the centennial borderless of the um, you know the borderless version of Pamela Coleman Smith's artwork uh, so they came out with a special you know um, I'll show you the I'll show you the actual version in a minute but um, this was the borderless version of what's called the centennial and it was based heavily on the original deck which was printed in 1909 1910 the pam a um and um they did such a nice job but i really love this deck because i've read so many people i mean so many people shuffled these cards and it was so beat up i had to edge it in blue which by the way is a great way to um you know clean up a deck you know I don't have many edge decks but this is one of them and I just really really love this so this is what I use um, at least once a week I, I read with this this is like my tarot deck you know this is a deck I will always have and one day I might have to retire it because it might get too beat up uh, and I have a backup copy of it which this was what it, the box would look like if you ordered it today brand new uh, and I got this on Black Friday for like $12, so just to give you a heads up. So I'm not going to keep showing you the entire deck, but I just want to show you. So this is my Centennial Borderless Workhorse. I have the regular Centennial, but it came in a box like this. I'm going to have to zoom out for this one. So this is the uh, commemorative set. Yeah, I can't zoom out anymore, unfortunately. But it comes in this box, you know. And um, so it's the artist. It has a whole bunch of stuff in here featuring the Smith Weight Tarot Centennial Edition deck. So this is going to be the. Um, let me show you. In here, you have a couple of books. You have extras like postcards, a uh, photograph of Pixie. You know, this is all stuff she did uh, before the deck you know her standard artwork and um the artwork and times of pamela coleman smith so this is a book by Stuart kaplan 
and Lynn uh, Arahu. I, I don't know how to pronounce that, but Stuart Kaplan is one of the great tarot historians. You know, he's now left us. Uh, but not just Rider Waite Smith. He did his encyclopedias are still used today by tarot historians. You know, if I, I sometimes will ask Cheryl Smith to help me with something. Um, you know about a deck, and she still refers to his encyclopedia for historic decks. He he's amazing. Him and um, another guy named Michael Dummett, who was, you know, an academic who um, was into tarot history. But you know, you can't say enough about Stuart Kaplan. He's just a man. And then there's a really nice copy of the Pictorial Key and uh, a bag in there. So. I really love this. I never open this unless I want to look through the books. Like I, I, I don't use the deck um, because uh, I have several like um, decks with that kind of 1909 vibe, and um, I just have no real need for it because I have the I like the borderless. But it's a beautiful deck, and it has the feel, very much the feel of the. Um, oh, look at that. <laughs> this is the hermit card from my borderless. I don't know how it ended up in there. Probably I was comparing them. Um, but uh, good thing I found that. I, I think I did it last night, actually. Um, but I love that color. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because I th I want to see... When I looked at this, I guess the border just makes it look different. But when I went to look at it, I said, Wow, this the blue looks like very different from the borderless version. So I pulled this out to see... And it wasn't. It's actually the same. It's just the border gives it a different feel, you know. So, but that's a hell of a way to lose a card, though. So, uh, yeah, just going to show you briefly that this is very close to the, you know, what would be considered the PAMA, you know. I don't like that they had the... Um, the copyright on there they don't have it on the borderless which is nice so but you know it's small it's not it's not too distracting but you know it's still kind of annoying uh, and uh, yeah, the yellow is very very cool it does have like a kind of filtered look to it you know like if we're being picky but when this came out there weren't many 1909 replicas uh, on the market and this was like really cool to me you know when i saw because i was like wow this is like really close to the pam a to me in my in my opinion since then we've had several decks come out which uh look more like the pam a i'm going to show you them so this one is um by um it's no longer printed unfortunately it's the study deck for tarot course uh it's a, what we call facsimile of uh the tarot deck i can't f i always thought there was a copy of this in the museum in the bibliotheque nationale or the british museum i think the british museum has um one of the other printings like one of the ones from the 70s like uh maybe the albino weight or something has but it doesn't have the pma um, at least not searchably, you know, because you can find the decks online, but um, Cracklebacks is what was originally, uh, well, the Roses and Lilies were the 1909, the Cracklebacks came in 1910, the PMA. But uh, this is an exact copy, it's a facsimile of a PMA, and supposedly it's Kenji's, who's a tarot historian, a well-known tarot figure. Uh, it's Kenji's uh, deck. You know, I don't know much about Kenji. I see his name every, all the time, and uh, you know, I know he's a big collector. I don't know if he passed away or not. Um, forgive me if he didn't. I don't think he did, but this is no longer available, regardless. But it's the PMA. It's what the PMA would look like. Obviously, it's going to have a little. It's going to be a little darker because it is a scan, you know, and it does lose something when you uh, scan a deck. But it looks great, though. I mean, it's not terrible. So, um, you know, this is the study deck for tarot course. I guess somebody was teaching a tarot course and wanted an exact copy of the 19, 
10 as if, you know, it's more potent or something. <laughs> you know, tarot has that kind of thing, you know. People just think, like, the original deck must be the most powerful or something, you know. But I think most people are just fans of the deck and they just want the original version because it was the first and I guess it's closest to Pamela's artwork. But there are different things to say about that, which I'm not going to get into. Uh, but this is the 1909 version, and this is put out by Drive Through Cards. It's called the Art Restoration Deck of Pamela Coleman Smith. And again, this isn't the Pam A, it's the deck before the Pam A, but it's almost identical. Um, and it's supposed to be a quote unquote reference standard of the Pamela Coleman Smith. And you can see it's a little lighter than the Centennial. I'm not going to do a comparison, but uh, it still has that kind of you know, look to it, because that, that's how the printing technology was back then, it was, it was kind of pixelated and uh, textured, Te uh, texture would be um, the right word, and um, like you can see, so the next deck I'm going to show you, which is uh, um, another old one, well, I'll, I'll talk about that when I get there, but this is a great deck, it's really it's really cool you know I like it and uh, they did a nice job I don't own a Pam A to compare to or, or this isn't a Pam A this is before the Pam A but still I, I don't have a deck to compare it to but um, it looks great to me and from what I've seen pictures and stuff uh, and I like the packs I really like the rose, roses and lilies it does come with some extra cards and supposedly it was printed in black and white uh, initially I don't know how true that is. I'm not like a Ryder Waite Smith uh, history buff. I, I know a bit, uh, but I don't actively research it, you know. Uh, I have friends that are a absolute experts on it, and they would know. Um, like, if you look at the, uh, there's a couple different printings that have, uh, you know, only a couple of colors. And, like, I know Farrell Humphreys has a deck uh, like that. And there's another deck that I can't think of right now, but... It's like that too. So now we're talking about the 1909 decks and... Oh yeah, so let me show you this one. So this is a blue box tarot, um, you know, Ryder deck. Ryder Company London. Ryder and Company in London. So this is the London version. They would have had a counterpart that's uh, in a yellow box that was sold in the United States, uh, I think. This is not what's called a Blushing Fool. This is after the Blushing Fool. The Blushing Fool, to me, uh, I had a copy of the Blushing Fool. I got rid of it uh, because it just it wasn't in great condition. Uh, and I just never used it. And it just wasn't... It didn't have a special feel to me for some reason. I just couldn't bond with it. But this one I can. I, I think it has to do with the condition of it. And this is by far, like, the nicest version of the Rider Waite Smith I have. This is a, a really beautiful version. The colors are just stunning for, you know, being a deck from the 70s and um, I don't know what the technology was that they used, but it's just stunning. It, it has like a, this amazing quality to it and feel, but I just absolutely love this deck. And um, so they call it the blush and we were talking about texturizing um, you know, uh, texturized uh, printing, you know, the colors. So I watched a walkthrough of, somebody did a walkthrough, I'll try and find it and link it below, uh, of their Pam A deck. They had a Pam A and a Pam B. And the Pam A deck was very texturized. It looked like, you know, you were looking at the face and it wasn't a solid color like this. The Blushing Fool, there was some sort of printing error and it, the the fool looked like he was literally like blushing, like he had blemishes on his face. But that was really a printing error. As far as I know, they fixed it, and that's what this is. So this is identical to the blushing fool, except that it doesn't have the blemishes. And I kind of, I don't know if I really cared about the blushing part. I just, like, had I had the blushing fool in this kind of condition, and the energy of the deck was just, I don't know, there was some magical feel about this deck that um, I really, really liked. I just bonded with it, and I love the coloring. It's just such a beautiful deck. 
and this is my absolute favorite you know and I almost never read with this I'll pull it out and sit with it I'll you know once in a while I'll do a reading with it but very very rarely almost never because it's a collection piece and I pull it out more for reference and it's just a special deck I don't know I, I don't want to jack it up so I, that's why I don't use it it's in very good condition and um, it's all I need I, I don't there might be one other yellow deck I want, sort of the yellow deck version of this. Uh, and if I come across a Blushing Fool that's in good condition for the right price or something, I might get it. But uh, So now, another deck that people talk about is this um, AGM deck, which is in the orange box. What's great about this is Rachel Pollock did the book, and I have the big version of this, and it's like having a book by Rachel Pollock. Um, and it's really really nice so that's one cool thing about it I'm not like a big fan of this deck I actually use this a, a, like often though but I'm not like a huge fan of it I just love that Rachel did the book and um, you know uh, it is really it has a really nice quality to it but nowhere near what I just showed you in the blue box but it has a nice quality to it the only issue is is it has that typewriter font which I don't like I really don't care for it, and I don't know why they made that decision over at AGM, which was connected to US Games somehow. I don't know. I know Stuart Kaplan worked with AGM, and there's a. I don't. I don't think it's the same company, but you know they are connected because I know Stuart Kaplan did some stuff for them back in the day. So I, I just don't know what the history there is. Like that color. Some people say this is very close to the Pam A. I always disagreed with that. Um, I didn't see what they were talking about. They were talking about like lines and stuff. But you can see on the full card, um, the, one of the very first things I noticed when I did a comparison was the Fool's Bag. If I can find the, the Fool. The Fool's Bag was, um, it has a, this weird thing with the um, bag. I don't know. Yeah, here it is. See, the bag there has an opening in the PMA, and it's closed up here. So to me, that's an indication that they patched up the line work. You know what I mean? They cleaned it up, which, you know, I didn't understand what they were talking about when they, as if it really mattered anyway. But it has the crackled backs, which is kind of cool. So it's closed that way. Um, and it's a nice all-around deck. I, I really like the box. I really like that it came in this kind of box, and I keep it um, be for that reason. There's another version that I have, um, you know, in that, uh, by the same company, AGM, and it's basically the same deck, as far as I can tell, uh, but this has a Roses and Lilies back, and it's in a blue box, you know. Uh, but this is cool because uh, I got the Spanish version, because I didn't want to look at those uh, typewriter things. And I, I felt like the Spanish, having it in Spanish just uh, made more sense to me. It didn't bother me as much. Well, it's a really pretty deck. I really enjoy it. And um, this is one I actually repurchased. I had it and I, saw, I had the English version. And I sold it. And then I decided to rebuy it. But I was like, I'm not going to buy the English version. I'm going to buy the Spanish version. I found a really nice deal on it. I do have a mini with that as well. So it's kind of cool, you know. Um, so moving right along. <laughs> uh, while we're on the topic of minis, I do have this mini here, which is another workhorse. As you can see, this is like a deck I keep in my bag. Buy US games, but this was printed in China, not Italy. Uh, and it's eons better than the Italy current printing. And it does have uh, the calligraphy we all know and love. So I, I definitely use this a lot. You can tell just by the box, you know, it's all jacked up. But this is, uh, you know, it's a great little version of the Rider Waite Smith. And I like having it. And I'll probably never get rid of it. This came in a box set, actually. Um, it came with a book by Susan Levitt and a Thoth deck. And um, I got rid of the Thoth deck. But 
I kept the rider deck and the um, the book because the book is great. Susan Levin is is uh, amazing. Um, so now we're winding down. I don't have too much left. I'm just going to show you briefly. Uh, this is the university books. There are a thousand videos on these, and they've all been seen a thousand times. But I just wanted to show you. I always like this box. I like the orange on the side. Look really cool. And then this is the Carol Publishing version. Carol Publishing version. Uh, it was originally printed by you, um, University Books. When I got this, I was like, "Wow, it feels like it's a knockoff." You know, I thought it might have been a knockoff, but it's not. This is actually just it's, it was really cra a crappy printing. I do like the pink and backs. And I really love the coloring of this. I mean, it's very psychedelic looking, um, great blues, kind of like the albino weight, you know. Love the angels in this deck, you know, the, the wings on all the angels and like on the lover's card, for instance, you know, it's just really, really cool. So I do love it. I just, I don't ever read with it because it's crappy card quality. And one day somebody's going to get the rights to this. And they're going to reprint it on like good quality cardstock, clean it up a bit, and um, you know reprint it because uh, this is would be a winner. And it's, it's a great classic deck. And the thing I really like about this deck, if I can find it, is the Nine of Pentacles. There we go. So the Nine of Pentacles. If you look, she has a shadow on her face. You know. And Rachel Pollock talks about that a lot. You know, it's like the dual nature of the woman on the um, uh, Nine of Pentacles, you know? It's like her dark side almost. And I think that really changes the meaning of the card, you know? And a lot of the modern decks don't have that shadow, you know? Uh, and it wasn't on the original, like the Pam A or whatever. It was added on here, but I think it's really nice. And so uh, another deck I have that does that, I'm going to show you next. But I just love this. I... I love the art again, but the card quality is just makes it to where you don't want to use it because I don't want to damage it. And I want to show you I have an alternative so to this deck. So because I don't use this deck often, I found this deck a long time ago by a company called Siren Imports, um, and I actually saw Simon from the Hermit's Cave show this a long time ago. There are several different versions of this. You have the yellow box. I think this was like the first one they did, but then the box went tan and the cards changed, the coloring changed. But this is the best one they've done, in my opinion. And that has brown box. This is still around. Like um, the company, I think, is not called Siren Imports anymore. But uh, and you could find these on eBay. You just have to really look for them. But uh, I'm going to show you. First off, it's a linen cardstock, really high quality. You know. It's printed in China, and you know the Chinese are really good with printing technology and paper. And um, it reminds me of that University Books deck, except it uh, you know is on really nice cardstock. So, and the Nine of Pentacles has that uh, shadow face, and it's a really great deck. And I think it's highly underrated, you know, because you almost never hear anybody talking about it. It's really a cool coloring of it, you know. And I don't know why they discontinued it, because it was one of the best ones I saw. It's a bit saturated. The, the colors, it's very saturated, but it doesn't bother me. I really like it. I'll try and find that Nine of Pentacles, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I mean, just just a really pretty, and again, the, like the angel's wings, for instance, you see, it's like you know got cool colors in it. Not as trippy as the um, University Books deck, but I love that, love that color blue or green, I should say. It's like greenish blue. See if I can find the Nine of Pentacles. There we go. So on this deck, you can see she has the shadow face again, which I thought was great. You know that they brought it back, and it shows that they used 
the university books probably as inspiration for that. I don't know about the other decks. The Albino Weight, which is a deck I have, um, I almost never ever touch. So these are the kind of like decks that I really barely touch. I'm going to show you all together here. So this is the Universal Weight Tarot. This was recolored by Hanson Roberts um, from the Mary Hanson Roberts from the Hanson Roberts Tarot deck. She's a pencil artist. She recolored and redid the artwork. And uh, if you're the type of person that doesn't like, you know, the kind of archaic, old school kind of vibe that the original artwork gives you, and you but you want to learn the system using the original deck, this is a good alternative. You know, and a lot of people love this deck. It was never my favorite. I never liked this, and I didn't like the radiant wine, the radiant tarot either. It should, I don't even own that. But uh, it just is never, I was always a purist. I always wanted the decks to look like they looked when I got that first deck as a kid, you know. But it is, you know, a pretty deck and, you know, maybe one day I'll use it. I know some people use it in like book illustrations and stuff. I've, I think um, Stephen Bright, actually, if I could be I'm pretty sure, yes, Stephen Bright used this in his, uh, in his book. As illustrations um, and that's a great book great tarot book by the way uh, still available and it's very inexpensive great for a beginner it was called tarot in focus I think oh the something guide to tarot in focus was the publisher but um, Tarot, Your Personal Guide was the book that was Stephen wrote on that. Okay, so this is the RWS Tarot deck uh, by U.S. Games. I do not like this deck at all. I was excited U.S. Games was putting out another Rider deck, another, another version of the Rider deck, but when I saw the colors, I was very disappointed. Now, in all fairness, I did see the images beforehand, you know, before I bought it. And as they say, there are no victims, only volunteers, but I don't know. I thought I might like it. You know, sometimes you look at something on the computer and it looks better than it actually is. And um, I think that's the case here, you know, because I, I got nothing from this deck. My friend Mendy loves this version. I think this is like her favorite version. I don't get it because it's just not my favorite. It's not... It feels like lifeless. Like all the blood has been drained out of this deck. That's that's how I feel about this. It's just not something that I'm crazy about. But it has really nice cardstock. And, you know, it, it is Pamela Coleman Smith's artwork. And uh, I'll hang on to it just because, you know, it's already here. I'm not going to get any money by selling or trading it. And, um, you know, I sort of collect Rider Waite Smith decks, I guess. I don't have like a huge collection, but you know, this is the Albino Weight, and these are all classic decks uh, that you will see, you know. Um, but it has these crazy white backs, which is amazing. I'm going to show you this quickly. And um, really pretty printing. The only thing is about this version, it's not in very good kind of clarity. It's almost like it was. I think the original version of this was a little better. I like that, again, the Nine of Pentacles has the shadow there, so yes, the Albino Wheat does have that. Uh, which is kind of cool. I don't know where that where that originated from. If you know, please leave the comment below, any of my Ryder Whitsmith fans, where was the first Nine of Pentacles with the shadow face? That's what I want to know. Because it's not in the yellow deck. The yellow box. This is just a really unique coloring of it, and uh, the vintage is supposed to be great. The vintage uh, is, you know, the colors are supposed to look a lot better. I don't know why that is. Look at that Queen of Pentacles, though. I mean, is that not beautiful? So, it's just a crazy coloring, you know, new age, classic, historic new age deck that, um, you know, people loved. Uh, so, 
now that we're showing like variations of the deck, I'm gonna show you this one, which is uh, it's kind of my last part of the video here. This is, I keep it in a bag because uh, I got this from Make Playing Cards. This is from Conrad Stein, who by the way has a new uh, deck out, I'm told. You know, I found out today that uh, he has a new kind of old fashioned um, deck on make playing cards i'll link his his store below i have to check it out i haven't even sold, sold it yet but um this is called the cs tarot naked and cut version so this doesn't have any labels whatsoever it's just the artwork and it's cut out and the card size is wonderful it's trump size which is basically playing card size you know and uh, i really really like it it's a, a great size this is a beautiful coloring of this deck you know and this is one that I use often and I keep it in the bag and this is another one I'll take with me on the go but uh, very very beautiful and uh, Conrad Stein's also a really nice guy all of his images sort of have that signature kind of crackle back to it um, but also a very nice guy I have the full deck which I'm going to show you really quickly So this is the CS Tarot. You see, I'm very fancy, you know. There are people that get tins and they print out the tins and make the tins look. I just ordered these boxes for 99 cents and I use them for like everything and I just write on them because that's good enough for me. Uh, so they come with extra cards. This is the, These are Pixies uh, artwork. And I thought that was like a nice touch, you know. But uh, this has a border to it and labels. So, really nice version of this deck, you know. And like I said, you know, Conrad Stein's a really nice guy and he's a very talented. He also has some Terra de Marseille decks, uh, you know, on his uh, page as well. He has an Arnold uh, and he has um, uh, another uh, Conver on there I'm gonna have to look on his uh, uh, his store because I haven't been on there in a while and I'm just finding out that he has a new deck out so it's kind of cool all right getting tired of uh, looking at Rider Waite Smith decks yet <laughs> because I'm going through my entire collection here uh, so I only have a couple left I don't really have that many compared to a lot of other people um, so since I'm showing you kind of different variations of it, we're going to stay in that mode and, uh, I'm going to show you this one, which I got, I overpaid for this. This was on, um, Facebook. Don't ever buy anything from Facebook. It's a terrible place to buy stuff from because you're always going to get ripped off. Um, always check on Amazon too, because it was $10 cheaper on Amazon. I think I paid almost $20 for this deck. It is a holographic version of, you know, the Rider deck. And it has these weird borders at the bottom. But uh, I kind of like it, actually. It's very thick. But the paper, like, the weight of the paper is very kind of, you know, nothing fancy. It doesn't have, like, that nice paper quality feel to it. But it's kind of cool. And I do use this occasionally for daily card pulls. I like it because... Uh, you know, you can sit it in my kind of holder and you can see the the whole card, the way it's designed. Like I just sit it in the slot and you can see it. So that's why I like this deck. It's also small, I can fit like, you know, five or six cards up there. Whereas with a full size deck, I can only fit a couple, you know. But uh, yeah, so this is a, it's kind of a cool star, you know holographic <laughs> as if I needed that right and um, but I actually kind of like it and it's worth it uh, if you buy it on Amazon you can get it probably for like 10 bucks or something um, I'm going to show you one more this is the I'm going to show you one more uh, in this box and I'm going to I'm going to show you two more <laughs> so that <laughs> which makes absolutely no sense but this is the last um like mass market deck I'm going to show you. So this is the, um, this is a pan B basically 
from um, Los Garabeo, Pamela Coleman Smith Tarot, and that's all this is basically. It's narrower. It feels narrower anyway. Um, I always feel like the cards are kind of shrunk in, but apparently the person who is behind Los Garabeo really loves the Pan B and um, feels like it's the you know the version of the Rider Waite Smith and um, I don't know. I really don't know. I love the greens in this deck. The line work is definitely different. It has a different feel to it. I would be curious to read about that and find out why this person, I don't even know their name, uh, but why this person feels that it's the, you know, like the real Rider Waite Smith. I don't know. The Even the calligraphy is a lot different, you know. You can tell the calligraphy has changed quite a bit uh, in this version. And um, I always like this deck. I like the greens in it, you know. It's interesting. So that is the Pamela Coleman Smith by um, the RWS Tarot by Los Garabeo. They have the same deck being printed in, um, I think, the original Rider Waite Smith or something. It's called the original Rider or the original, the original Weight Tarot or something. I forget, but it's like their newest one. And I thought, here I thought it was going to be like a 1909, because everybody's sort of doing that 1909 version, but uh, he's sticking to his guns and still doing the Pan B. It's this deck, it's just in a different box, basically, is what I'm told. Um, okay, so the last ones I'm going to show you, I might show you one, one more after this too, but I'll show you these together. So these are not put out by a company, this is Carol Hertzer, uh, these are handmade uh, hand painted in some cases uh, she touches some things up but um, she laminates and cuts everything herself her, her husband does the cutting Dirk he does the cutting Carol does all the art and you know everything else but uh, it's a team effort by her and her husband Carol and her husband um, but this is these are two of my favorite decks ever this is the illuminated tarot comes in a beautiful handmade bag these are a bit pricey, but, you know, they're pieces of art. And she signs every deck. Um, don't know where my title card is right at the moment. Hopefully it's in here. <laughs> but uh, you can see it's very, very beautiful. Just a pretty, pretty deck. I'm actually, what I'm looking for is the title card. It's gotta be in here somewhere. Yeah, it's in here somewhere. I don't know where the hell it is, but it's signed. The back signed. I'll look for it later. It says January 1st, 2020, I believe. And then the other, ver the other version of this is the um, Starlight, which is much bluer. It's a much more bluer uh, version. Okay, so here's the signed card here. She signs and dates everyone. I was trying to show you on the other one. It's buried in there somewhere. But uh, these are smaller. That was actually, the version I just showed you is printed on thicker cardstock. You have to ask for that specifically. But uh, this is definitely uh, more flexible. I don't hate this cardstock, actually. Uh, it's actually very nice to handle. Um, and this Starlight deck is absolutely beautiful. It's so blue. And it's one of my absolute favorite decks of all time. You know, both of these. I mean, look at that page. It's all so pretty. I'm kind of getting tired now. I'm probably missing stuff because I've showed you so many decks, but um, this is a beautiful deck. I love it. So that's Carol Hertzer. Okay, I'm going to show you one more, and this is going to be the end. All right? And this is, I think, my entire collection. I might have missed, like, one or two somewhere, but uh, I pretty much showed you every Rider Waite Smith I have. 
uh, that's all you know Pixies artwork, not um, not like you know based on the artwork. Like it, it, this is probably the closest to that. This deck here that I just showed you, like these two decks, they are a lot of liberties are taken with these, but it's still she used the original line work. Okay, so this is what I'm going to show you. This is the last deck. This is a plastic version of the Rider deck. I almost never use this. I bought it because I thought, well, it looks really cool. I more or less bought this out of curiosity. Um, I said, oh, it could be my outdoor deck because I do do a lot of stuff outdoors, but I never use it. I still bring, you know, the same damn decks. But um, I'm not crazy about this plastic. It's very kind of... It's a different kind of plastic than the first deck I showed you. But I like this version better than the deck print currently uh, in Italy. Because, you know, it has the, the, the calligraphy and the colors are highly saturated. Very, very kind of heavy colors. But it looks a lot better than the Italy deck, I think. You know, oops, sorry about the shaky camera. But, uh, yeah, so this is the plastic one. This does shuffle really nice, though. Like, like, really nice. It feels great, actually. But uh, it's a nice coloring. So, anyway, I think we looked at enough of Pamela Coleman Smith's artwork uh, to last a lifetime. So now, you know, I'm not going to probably do a Rider Wade Smith deck until, like, next year. Another Rider Wade Smith video until next year, my entire collection. But there you have it. Um, so thanks for tuning in. I hope this was uh, not too redundant. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, and I guess until next time, love and peace, everyone. Bye-bye.